We're with Esri. My name is Dean Kensock, and I'm here with Stephen Moore, and we're both part of the Esri development team in Redlands, California. And we're here today to talk really about some of the things we're doing to expand the reach of OSM to our user community, which is a very large user community, millions of users around the world, and then beyond that. Next. So most people, when they think of Esri, if you know us, you know us as a GIS software company, as a mapping software company, and we are that, certainly. But another aspect of what we do that's less familiar, perhaps, to you is that we publish a lot of information content, information products that we make available through ArcGIS and through other products. So we have something that we call a living atlas of the world, where there's maps and layers coming from Esri, as well as thousands of other contributors, uh, users of ours, like cities and counties and national ma mapping agencies and partners of ours. And they're curated across a variety of themes, things like base maps or imagery or demographics. So Esri is curating this living atlas of the world, producing some of the content, but most of it's coming from our community. Next. Uh, one of the things we've been doing through the Living Atlas is to make available open street map data. So a lot of our users, governments, NGOs, commercial organizations would really like to leverage open street map content, but it hasn't always been really easy for them to do that. So going back over 10 years now, we first started making open street map available as a base map within our ArcGIS Online system. Uh, we later started making OS OSM data uh, accessible through ESRI-based maps. So for some parts of the world, we use, use OSM data, bring that into our maps, and make it available in ESRI styles. Uh, so for example, in Africa and large parts of Asia, we do that. A couple of years ago, we introduced ESRI's world imagery base map, uh, which we'll look at a little bit later, and made it available through OSM editors. So if you're editing through uh, OSM, uh, OpenStreetMap.org, for example, you can use our imagery as a base map for your edits. Uh, and then more recently, we've been working on a few active projects, which we're going to focus on today. Uh, a mirror database we have of OSM that we're using to serve out various content, and then some enhancements we're making to world imagery. Next. So one thing we did over the last year that we uh, were happy about, and I think you might be able to take advantage of, of, we're through the OSM mirror database that we maintain, we're producing a vector base map of the world. Uh, so Esri is generating the vector base map using OSM data exclusively and using OSM cartography by default. And we update this base map worldwide about every three weeks. We're hosting it in ArcGIS Online, making it available as an open website and service. And so you can access this uh, through ArcGIS.com, and it's freely available to anyone. You don't have to be an Esri software user at all. It's under a Creative Commons attribution only license, so anybody can use this in their maps and apps, make it publicly available. There's no limits whatsoever on that. So in addition to the default cartography, we've started to make some other styles available. Some of the Esri cartographic styles, there's links at the bottom of the slides to a few of those. And we're also making it available in some different coordinate systems or tiling schemes. Uh, by default, Many of you probably know most of the web maps you see are in Web Mercator coordinate system, but some users can't use that. They want something like GCS, WGS84. So we also produce OSM maps in that tiling scheme. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Steve and he's gonna show us a couple things. All right. Yeah, so I'm just gonna kinda <clears throat> walk through a couple demos that, that actually illustrate or, or demonstrate what, uh, what a lot of things Dean just talked about. So um, this right here is the OSM vector tile base map that Dean, Dean talked quite a bit about. Uh, this is the, the first style that we made. So this is basically kind of mimicking the out of the box OSM Cardo style that you see in the raster base map tiles. Um, so we also have a handful of, of new styles that we've created over the last, I think it's about the last two years or so. Um, so this one laid on top here is basically copying the style of our Esri streets base map. So uh, how many people are familiar with vector tile services, like kind of how those work? All right, most people. So obviously we just have a single tile set and then we're pointing different style files at it. So it's the same set of tiles. We're just kind of restyling them kind of on the fly, rendering them differently in the client. So same tile set with this one. It's just pointing to our, our street style. This is a brand new one, just really recently came out. Uh, so it's like a blueprint style. So kind of obviously looks like a blueprint, um, kind of cool. We also have, I'm gonna turn on, this is our world imagery base map, and we've got this hybrid reference style. So 
again, same tile set, but in the style, we've removed all the kind of polygons, land use, all that stuff. We're just using the roads, transportation, some POI information, stuff like that, labeling, just as a reference that you can overlay on top of our imagery base map. Uh, and then I think the newest one, I'm actually gonna move, uh, oh, I lost my bookmark. Well, here, I'll just show you right here. Uh, it's not gonna be the most exciting spot, but we actually have a couple versions that are transparent so that we can overlay on top of our world hill shade. So yeah, I had a bookmark. If you type in burn, it'll probably work. Yeah, nicely. let me jump somewhere a little more interesting. Somewhere with some elevation. Yeah, there we go. So we've got two styles for this one. Uh, this one, again, is our Esri Streets base map. And then this one, I think, actually looks a little bit better right now. This is the OSM one. So again, same, same OSM style, a little bit transparent. There's more work than that that was done. But uh, to allow that, that shaded relief to kind of show through underneath, so you get that, you know, that, that hill shade effect, which is pretty cool. Uh, so because this is, uh, this is, these are all vector tile based, what I can do is create my own custom style. So we have a tool, it's a web application in beta. Uh, it's called the Vector Tile Style Editor. So I'm already signed in with an ArcGIS Online account. Like Dean mentioned earlier, you can do this for free with a developer account. So everything that we're going to show today, you can do for free. I'm using a paid account, but it doesn't really matter for this. So I'm going to select the OSM base map. We have a couple options. We actually demoed this last year at State of the Map. And we had this kind of editing experience where you can go through every sublayer in that tile set and you can get very granular. You, I mean, there's hundreds, dozens, if not hundreds <coughs> of layers in there. So if you want real fine grain control, you can do it that way. But we also have this quick edit experience <clears throat> where we basically condense all those layers down into just six categories. So all the, all, all the layers that are you know, associated with land are here. So I can just pick this one color, change it, and it changes, if you see those multi-scale previews down at the bottom, you can see it changes it at every scale level. And it's not just a single, you know, there's obviously not just one land polygon layer that I'm changing. It's all of these. So we'll do the same for water, just to sort of illustrate it. Not, not very pretty, but. Um, so the cool part too, at this point, I can actually save this. I can persist the style. So I'll just call this something like that. Sorry, this is a brand new laptop. I got it like two days ago and the touchpad is, I'm still getting, there you go. <laughs> the touch bar is really throwing me out. So I'm um, saving the style right now. I'm saving it to my ArcGIS Online organization. Um, again, I have a paid account. You can do this with a, with a developer account as well. It'll be the same experience. So I'm gonna go back to my, my web map here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna search my content. So I, that's my custom base map that I just made. So with just a couple clicks, you know, because of that, I had that quick editing, editing experience, change two or three colors. You have really a, a very custom looking base map. You didn't have to create the tiles or store the tiles. You're pointing to our tile set. You're just pointing your style file uh, at our tiles. So, and then you can consume that in, you know, web applications, mobile applications. We have a whole suite of, of a platform of apps, basically, that you can uh, consume that in. So I'm gonna hand it back to Dean. Cool. Thanks, Steve. Next. So that's where we kind of are right now with the OpenStreetMap vector base map. A couple things that are coming up. One, more styles. So our Esri cartographers are building more styles like the blueprint and other ones you saw there. I mentioned the global tiling scheme. Uh, we're making that available for use. Uh, it's also available in a flat tiling scheme for some development environments that require that. We've been working with a lot of our distributors around the world. Uh, for example, in the UK, where they'd like to use OSM, but they need to use it in their own local coordinate system. So in the UK, they don't work in Web Mercator or GCS. <laughs> they use British National Grid. So here's an example of OSM in the British National Grid. So with our software, you can project into pretty much any known coordinate system and OSM can be delivered that way. And then an option for deployment on-premises behind firewalls for organizations that want to use OSM in, in secure environments for various reasons. Next. 
So that's it with base maps. Another thing we're doing is trying to make the underlying data of OSM more accessible. So in the case of the vector base map, we're pre-tiling, cooking the data into tile cache and serving that. But what if you just want to get to a layer like buildings or points of interest? So we have some new services that we're making available that do that, where we deliver OSM data as feature services, where we're streaming the data through a web service. Um, Esri is hosting a mirror of the database, as I mentioned. We've got a server sitting in front of that, and then we're exposing it as feature services. So there's an initial set of these feature layers available in ArcGIS Online in that group, uh, which is currently in beta. And then we're also working on a new set of hosted feature layers, which is a Esri terminology that we use, but essentially moving these feature data sets into our ArcGIS Online cloud environment, which is going to give us much more scalability and better performance under high loads uh, of usage. And we'll also enable some additional capabilities like doing spatial analysis, uh, things like clustering, and then the export of features. So if you wanted to export the buildings from Minneapolis, you'll be able to do that as well. So I'll hand it back to Steve to do a quick demo of that. Yeah, so this is the group that Dean was just talking about. This is the public beta group that contains those three layers. So uh, you can you find this by searching ArcGIS.com. Just search for OpenStreetMap layers, and you'll find it. Um, so right now, just these three buildings, roads, and POIs. Um, but we do have, obviously, some plans to, to expand on that. I'm going to jump back to my web map here. what happened, but my bookmarks got screwed up. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so just to kind of show you what, what we're talking about when we say, you know, feature service or feature layer, um, it's these three layers right here. So OpenStreetMap POIs, because these aren't tiled, these are clickable features. I can query them, I can, you know, do analysis on them, things like that, that, that you can't do with either a vector or a raster tiled base map. So in this case, it's a, it looks like it's a hotel. Um, I'll get all the tags that are in that OSM feature queried out directly from our database. Uh, we also have the road network, pretty self-explanatory. And turn that off. And then buildings. So I'm going to jump down here. So one of the cool things too, because they're they're dynamic features, you can symbolize based off a specific category. So I can change. In this case, I've changed the renderer to a unique values renderer that's rendered off the building type. So um, you know, you can actually filter out certain building types if you don't want them. You can symbolize them, you know, however you want based on that, that underlying database information. So to kind of demo how this works, I'm going to jump to a kind of random place here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and turn on our world imagery base map. You can see there's some houses there. So I'm actually going to jump to the ID editor, which I assume everybody's relatively familiar with. Um, and actually, one thing I'll point out here, so this is, uh, it, it took me a long time to find a spot where Bing imagery didn't look didn't look really great. <laughs> so <laughs> the, the Microsoft can, can take it as a compliment. But uh, in this case, you know, like you mentioned, we've, we've added the, our world imagery base map as a background layer option. So if I switch to that, in this case, it's, it's you know, there's some cloud cover, the Bing imagery. You can switch to Esri imagery and it's a little better. Sometimes the quality is the same, but the, the, the age of the imagery is, is better in one or the other. So it's just another option um, and it's, uh, yeah, pretty useful. So I'm in the ID editor and what I'm gonna do, well, I struggle with my touchpad. Just bear with me for one second. I'm gonna add a polygon. This imagery that he's working against is actually imagery that we got from uh, the city of Cedar Rapids. They're one of our users and they've shared their imagery with us. So I think this is uh, March 2019 vintage, something like that, uh, seven centimeter, if I recall correctly. So it's an example where we have some imagery from our users that's pretty good quality that's been built into our map and it may distinguish it from some other areas, some of the other base maps there. We don't have that everywhere, but for many places we do. Cool, so <clears throat> I just pushed that in. So that's real live ID editor. And I'm gonna jump back here. So obviously nothing nothing has shown up yet. So to kind of explain like what, what is happening and, and go into that database mirror a little bit more <clears throat> that Dean mentioned earlier. So this is kind of the, 
the structure of it. Um, so I just push that edit into the OSM database. Every minute, we're pulling down the previous minute's worth of changes in OSM. So any edit that came in around the world in the last 60 seconds is getting pulled in right now to our Postgres database. So we're using a couple tools. We're using Osmosis and OSM to PG SQL to pull those down, ingest them into our database. And something kind of key about our database is that it's not just a flat Postgres database. It's a, we have the Esri Geo database enabled on top of that. So without going into like a lot of detail, basically that, that lets us kind of leverage enterprise Geo databases um, and, and kind of expose the data into our platform. So we can do a whole lot of other stuff with it specific to our sort of use cases and, and customers. Uh, from there, we're using, uh, right now we're using our enterprise kind of server-based software, ArcGIS Server, or ArcGIS Enterprise is really how it's been kind of rebranded. Uh, we're publishing map and, and really just map services for now. You can actually hit that if you want, osm.arcgis.com. Uh, and then again, because we have that geo database enabled from there, we can consume it kind of across our whole, our whole you know, ecosystem of apps, basically. So the future plan is more or less the same design, uh, but instead of going into uh, that Postgres database, we want to push the data directly up to ArcGIS Online, which is our cloud environment, host the data there, update it there, and then serve the features out from that same location. Uh, so the, the, the mechanism that we would use to kind of expose the, those views on the, on the data is a little bit different, what we call like a feature layer view. Um, the goal would be we'd, we'd hopefully open it up so that users could define custom views so that they could say, um, you know, rather than just having buildings and roads and POIs, they could say, I want houses or I want, you know, apartment buildings or whatever it is. Uh, so a lot more kind of fine grained control over um, the features that you're getting. So I'm going to jump back. We're almost out of time, I think. Right. Yeah, just a couple minutes. Yeah. Yep. And so this is that area where I just digitized. So remember, I added I added that building footprint over here in ID. So while I've been talking, hopefully what's been happening is that feature got pushed all the way through. So there it is, shows up in our, our database. And I didn't, in this case, I didn't really add much many attributes because um, I just picked a house. But uh, you know, if I put in the address, anything like that, that would show up there as well. And again, these are dynamic features. So I can query, do analysis. You know, uh, it's, not, it's not a tile. And even if it was a tile, it's not going to be in the OSM raster base map, uh, which I'm not showing here. But um, if I switch to that, I mean, I think you all, you all get it. But, it's not going to be in the OSM raster tile base map for you know minutes, hours, who knows. So, um, <coughs> yeah. just one more slide. I think we're done. I think we have one more slide, and then we might have a couple minutes for questions. If not, we got. Uh, so yeah, just the last thing I wanted to mention was on the world imagery. So as I mentioned, uh, it's being actively uh, updated. In world imagery, we have a mix of satellite and aerial imagery that we get from many sources. The satellite primarily comes from Maxar or Digital Globe, if you know them by that. And we're working very actively with Maxar to update the imagery for the United States. Uh, just this summer, we updated all of the contiguous United States with a new version of what they call vivid imagery. And one of the big improvements of that was the horizontal accuracy. So the accuracy of the pixels to where they are in the real world. They used to be accurate to within about 10 meters, which was maybe the width of this room. Now it's accurate to about four meters, which is you know less than half the width of this room. So if you're digitizing off of that, your accuracy will improve quite a bit in the United States, and that's going to go worldwide soon. And then we're also integrating content from our user community around the world, national mapping agencies down to local cities uh, for hundreds of those. So with that, I think that's all we had to share. Uh, we have a minute maybe for any questions. <laughs> Uh, so the question was, do the feature services have uh, information about the features like usernames or other history attached to it? You want to cover that one? So the ones that I just showed don't. Uh, the, the hosted feature services that we were talking about, we're going to have, uh, I think, like the version, the timestamp. Um, there's a little bit of an issue with exposing the user. I think the terms are that you have to be an OpenStreetMap user in order to, to access that information. And so with this, if we expose it to the future service, anybody could get to it and see it. So we haven't included it for now. But um, yeah, history, we haven't really talked about. That's one of the powers of the views we were talking about, is we could store the information in our database, but only expose selected amounts, and it wouldn't be accessible if it's not supposed to be. Yes, sir. Uh, 
you want to cover Yeah, that? so uh, the question was, does the, does the roads layer include other types of pads? Um, so right now what we're doing is taking from the from the sort of out-of-the-box OSM Cardo style that's used in the raster tile-based map, we're taking the SQL queries that define those layers and basically just copying them. So whatever is defined as a road in uh, the raster-based map is what we're using right now. Yeah, so this this database will have all the features and then it's kind of what we define as these views. So I think we will we'll expose a very wide, a wide set of those layers like paths. Yeah, all the, all the data, all the tags are there in our database. It's just a matter of querying out the specific ones that combine to create the layer. So, so I think we are out of time and I want to be respectful of the next presenter. So thank you very much. Yeah, and we...